Hey survivors, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. Base building is a critical part to survival in Cannibal Crossing. It's where you sleep at night to regain health and energy, is where you'll craft ammo and resources, and if built properly, a place to defend against the many hordes of cannibals and negatives in the game. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design a base that should withstand any attack. Let's get started. So the first thing to having a proper base is by using a building that is further away from other buildings. At the time of this video, enemies are not supposed to spawn in your base, but can spawn in buildings nearby. So I like to pick buildings like the Slurm Factory or this bowling alley because there are few buildings close by. Second, you'll probably want a base more in the middle of the map like I am, so no matter where you need to go, it won't be too far of a walk. The first thing you'll want to do is to turn on building mode and see how many buildable slots you have inside the building. You're looking for buildings with two 2x3 two slots and one 2x2 two two slots minimum, so you can make a tent, a smelter, and a large safe. As you can see in this bowling alley, by breaking down all the furniture inside, it has freed up many extra slots, so I'm nearly able to fit all the crafting stations I want inside there safely. Note that I try to keep my tent area free of crafting stations, as I find you might get stuck on them or make it hard to enter. Next, onto building defenses, you'll need to make two things first, power and a bait station. When it comes to power, I don't mess around and I just make a large generator because nothing is worse than running out of energy mid horde. You'll need two generators equidistant to each other like this. In this way, you'll maximize the area you cover. You won't need to power anything inside your base at this time. Then build a bait station in this area. A bait station will open up more defensive options and give you new turrets. The main reason for the bait station is that it'll give you the barbed wire option. For a cheap cost of wood and metal, you could make this upgraded fence that slows down enemies and hurts them. I like actually using a simple rectangle fence design rather than the entire outer part of the power grid because it'll be easier to see what spots need to be replaced and save you on materials. At this point, you'll notice I have the basic Peacemaker turret as the majority of my turrets. At this point of development, the turrets shoot much more often and have a longer range than the cheaper bolter. When you have more materials, I'd recommend upgrading your tent to heal faster, or you can upgrade your bait station to get stronger turrets like the flamer turret and the lightning rods. As you can see, I'm on day 12, and the majority of my turrets aren't lightning rods, nor have I replaced the barbed wire with the high-tech fencing, as it does the job and is cheap to replace. I don't recommend filling the interior of the barbed wire area with too many crafting stations or safes, as there will be times that you'll still get overwhelmed and enemies will destroy them. That's why we have a protected inside area inside of our building. So that's how I design my base in Cannibal Crossing. Even with nightly negative waves and sometimes what feels like a constant stream of enemies, my base holds up and not only does a lot of damage for me, but gets me a lot of bonus experience. Let me know in the comments below what buildings you like to use for bases in Cannibal Crossing. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Check out the rest of my channel for other videos on Cannibal Crossing, video games, board games, and other fun things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.